Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to take a look at how to set up a timer that lets you do pretty much whatever you want. So let's take a look. Hi guys, so sorry for the mess. I'm currently setting up a plane for a friend, or actually a couple of planes for a friend, both C1 chasers. Um, but anyway, this, this particular one, I'm looking to set up uh, a couple of modes on the QX7, which, yeah, it's a great transmitter, but it doesn't have as many switches as others. So I was looking at alternate ways of setting some things up. And actually another video I'll be working on straight after this will have the solution I came up with. But it led me to need to investigate timers because I, I wanted to enable something and then after a set time have it uh, automatically switch off rather than having to rely on an on off switch for this one function. So I was started thinking about that literally when I woke up in the morning about six, <laughs> six in the morning or lying in bed just thinking about this stuff. Um, and then I can't remember if it was the same day or the day after I got a comment on YouTube from Matey HV1 and he was asking about how to set up a timer uh, because th there is a timer function in OpenTX, but it's limited to how long you can actually set. I think it's something like 2 minutes 55 seconds or something like that. So he mentioned possibly stacking timers, which is something that I've thought to check out. I mean, he, he actually edited his comment and had a solution. He, he basically used timer free on the transmitter, which is a nice simple way of doing it. Um, the reason he didn't before is because he thought it showed it on the screen, which he didn't want. Um, but I thought, well, I need to look at this anyway. So let's see if we can come up with a solution. And yeah, it's actually quite, quite easy to do. So we can have a programmatical timer that we can basically set for as long as we want. It's limited purely by global variables. So I think, I believe the maximum global variable size is 1024, which works out to something like 17 hours and four minutes. So you can see with that, if we have a standard minute timer, we've got plenty. You could change the timer to every two minutes and then that doubles it. So um, the scope is pretty much endless depending on the granularity of the timer that you want. Anyway, that's enough chat. Let's head over to the desktop and we'll have a look how to do this in OpenTX Companion. Okay, so we're in Companion. I've just created a blank model so we can just get straight into it. So the first thing that we need to set up is a global variable. So they're in flight modes. Obviously, if you're on your transmitter, depending on the transmitter, these are in different places. So I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. So some of them are on their own screen, uh, GVAR screen. Some like the QX7, they're actually in flight modes. So if you go into your flight modes, and I can't remember if it's at the bottom of the list or just you click on uh, flight mode one, but you can edit the global variables inside um, the flight mode area. But on companion, we're doing it here. So what we're going to do is set up a global variable, call it TMR for timer. We're going to give it an initial value of minus one. So we can change the minimum to minus one. And then the maximum you could leave at 1024. That will give you the full 1024 minutes range. But we're actually going to limit it to however long we want our timeout to be. So I'm going to be using Matey HV1's example for this. So what he wanted was a beep every five or ten minutes. So when when he's flying his plane, every five ten minutes, it'll just do a beep, so he knows how long he's been flying. So we'll we'll use that as this example. So what we now need to do is create some logical switches. So the first one is unsurprisingly going to be a timer. So what we're going to do is set this to 30 seconds and this to 30 seconds. So you can see those two 30 seconds, we have an on and an off. They total one minute, so 60 seconds. So each on and off is going to be one minute in time. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to just build it all in one go. I'm going to go through each uh, step. So we've created a timer, but now what we need to do is when that logical switch one trips on, we need to adjust our global variable. So that will, every time it goes through, it will actually increase our global variable. So we want increment by one. 
So our global variable, the timer, is basically a minute counter. So that's all that's going on here. So now what we want to do, what I'm going to do actually, what you want to do, leave it at 30, but I'm going to change it to like half a second just so that it's quicker to, to view on screen. So I'm going to do 0 0.5, 0, 0 0.5, otherwise we'll be waiting a minute just to watch what happens. Um, so yeah, keep those at uh, 30 seconds. But now what we want to do is we need a stop for our timer. So what we're going to do, A equals X, and then we're going to find our global variable one, our timer, and say we want to, he, he was after five or 10 minutes. So we'll use five as an example. So what it will actually be on our system here is five seconds. So now what we need to do is go and create some more special functions. And these are based on logical switch two. So this is when we reach our time limit. So the first thing that we need to do is reset the timer. So we're going to go adjust global variable one. This time we're just going to set a value and we're going to set it to zero. So there is a difference. You notice we set the initial to minus one and this is setting to zero. There is a reason for that and I'll explain it uh, later. But now what we also need to do is add in an action for what we actually want to happen when we reach our five minute uh, time. So we're just going to play a sound, beep one, no repeat. So what we should have now, if I simulate, you'll see the logical switch one go on and off every half second. And that will obviously increase the global variable. And then every five seconds, it will play a beep. So if we simulate, you can see global variable going on and off. You can see our count incrementing. And when we get up to five, it resets back to zero. And hopefully you can hear a beep. I've not got my headphones in, but uh, you should see that the beep would be triggering because the counter is resetting. So hopefully you guys can hear a beep. I, I just can't because I've not got my headphones on. But anyway, you can see it's working, but at the moment, as that stands, if you want something that's just actively running all the time, great, there's no problem there. But if this is something you want when you're flying, we need to add a bit more. So what we'll do is we'll add in, say, our arm switch. So for this example, I'll use SF as the arm switch. So we'll have SF up as armed. So now the timer will only run when we're armed. And what we also now need to do is when we disarm, so SF down, we need to reset the timer to the pre-run position. So we'll go adjust GV1 value, but this time it needs to be minus one. Okay, so while I'm here, why minus one and zero? You can see when we're not running the timer we want it at minus one but when we're running the timer we want to just reset to zero the reason is as soon as the timer starts running logical switch one will activate and skip it on to the the next number so if we start at zero before we start running the timer it's going to skip straight to one minute which we don't want we want it to go yeah have a minute then mark the minute have a minute and mark it so by setting it to minus one, when it first activates, it just sets it to zero and we're starting from our blank slate. Of course, while it's running, we get to the five minutes. We just want to go back to zero. And because it's already triggered, it won't sort of double skip. So it will go one, two, three, four. As soon as it gets to five, it goes zero. So we get the full five minutes. So let's have a look at that working. So you can see we're counting up at the moment because of the position of SF. So we'll get our bleep and go back. But as soon as we disarm, the timer stops and we go back to minus one. So it's ready to start again for the next time. So as soon as we arm, the counter starts timing. And you can see what I mean. If I disarm, as soon as I arm, watch that go from minus one to zero. So that's why we have it at minus one. And of course, once we get to the five, it just goes straight back to zero. So there you go. That's how you can have a timer to basically do whatever you want. So we're using it for a special function here. And what I'll be showing in a video coming out very soon, which I'm literally going to start recording as soon as this one finishes, is how I'm going to set that up to do something in iNav.
thank you very much guys for watching if you found this video useful please give it a thumbs up don't forget like subscribe bell icon and this helps get the video out to more people so they can learn how to do all this stuff with OpenTX2. So thanks guys, have fun, flow models like you stole them, I'll see you on the next one.